hey guys welcome to geo Motsuku. in today's video we are looking at factors affecting temperature now what is temperature temperature simply refers to how hot or cold an area is now there are four factors which affect temperature number one is latitude number two ocean currents number three altitude and lastly distance from the ocean in today's video we are going to cover latitude and ocean currents and in my next video i will do altitude and distance from the ocean okay now let's do the first two latitude and ocean currents okay now the first one is latitude most of you may know it as distance from the equator that's because and the equator is a line of latitude it is the zero degree line of latitude so lines of latitude when we define them we say they are lines which measure the distance north and south of the equator north of the equator we have lines of latitude going up until our north pole which is 90 degrees north south of the equator we have lines of latitude going up until 90 degrees south our south pole so lines of latitude measure the distance north and south of the equator as we move away from the equator we have other lines of latitude right then this line of latitude is 23 and a half degrees north and we know that 23 and a half degrees north of the tropic of cancer now this the distance from the equator this distance is given in degrees so lines of latitude measure the distance north and south from the equator north and south from the equator now how do these lines of latitude affect temperature how do they affect temperature now on the side i drew the sun and this is my earth i have my zero degree line of latitude which is the equator i have 90 degrees north i have 90 degrees south these are my poles these are my poles now the equator receives direct insulation direct insulation di receives direct insulation hence it has higher temperature it has high temperatures because it receives direct insulation from the sun look at my arrow it is direct so there's high temperatures it is hot at the equator it's hot at the equator because it receives direct insulation of radiation from the sun but if you look at my poles 90 degrees north and 90 degrees south now look at my arrows my arrows are no longer going direct but they are going indirect so my poles are receiving indirect insulation they are receiving indirect insulation hence they are cold they have lower temperatures because they receive indirect insulation from the sun but if you look at my equator it is receiving what direct insulation hence it has high temperatures it is hot because of the direct insulation and this direct insulation is covering a small surface area it's covering a small surface area hence our equator will be hotter but if you move towards our pole this indirect insulation is covering a wider or a bigger surface area look at it it is a wider surface area compared to the equator so the equator is receiving direct insulation over a small surface area hence it is hot and our poles are receiving indirect insulation over a wider surface area hence they are cold they have low temperatures they have what they have low temperatures now as we move away from our equator Remember, let's move away from our equator now. Our equator have high temperatures. Let's move away. As we move towards our poles, what's going to happen to our temperatures? Our temperatures will get lower and lower as we go towards the poles. Because the poles have low temperatures. They are receiving indirect insulation. So, if you move away from the equator going towards the poles, temperatures will be lower. But, if you move from the poles going towards the equator, temperatures will be higher because at the equator we receive direct insulation right so one more time our equator receives direct insulation from the sun 
hence it is high temperature as it is hot. This direct insulation covers a small surface area. A small surface area. But if we go towards our poles, our poles are receiving indirect insulation. My arrows are not going directly, they are what? They are indirect. And this indirect insulation is covering a wider surface area. Hence, my poles are cold. They have low temperature. Now, this is how latitude affects temperature. At the zero degree line of latitude, the equator will receive direct insulation, right? Hence, it is hot. But at the poles, it is now indirect. It is indirect. It covers a wider surface area. Hence, it is cold. It will have low temperature. Now, as you move from the equator, going towards the poles, remember, the equator will have high temperatures. But as you move towards the poles, temperatures are going to decrease. Because you're going towards the cold regions where there is low temperatures. But if you go from the poles going towards the equator, we're going down from the poles towards the equator, temperatures are going to increase because the equator will receive direct insulation. It is hot. Now, this is how latitude affects temperatures, right? At the equator, there's high temperatures. At the poles, there is low temperature. The second factor which affects temperature is ocean currents. Ocean currents. Remember, our oceans are moving. Now, this movement of this ocean water is known as the ocean currents. Ocean currents refer to the movement of what? Of ocean water. Now, we have two types of ocean currents. Warm ocean currents and cold ocean currents. Now, this depends on where they come from. If the ocean current comes from the equator, it will be a warm ocean current because remember uh, latitude our equator receives direct insulation and it is warm, hotter so if the ocean current comes from the equator it's going to be warm but if the ocean current originates from the poles it is going to be cold it's going to be a cold ocean current now on the east we have our warm ocean current which comes from the equator or it originates at the equator on the west we have our cold ocean current which comes from the poles or it originates at the poles but these ocean currents have specific names at the east of south africa we have the warm mozambique current the warm mozambique current it originates at the equator hence it is warm but on the west we have the cold Benguela current the cold Benguela current right so whenever we ask you about the ocean current which affects South Africa on the east don't just say warm current say it is the warm Mozambique current when we ask you about the ocean current which affects South Africa on the west don't just say cold current it is the cold Benguela current now these ocean currents will affect the coastal temperatures on the east coast and on the west coast. Now, the warm Mozambique current will bring warm, moist air. Let me let it down. Will bring warm, moist air. Will bring warm, moist air. The cold Benguela current, it is cold. It will bring cold, dry air. It will bring cold, dry air. It brings the cold dry air to the west coast of South Africa. The warm Mozambique current brings warm moist air to the east coast of South Africa. Now, cold dry air sinks. It sinks, subsides or descends because it is heavy and dense. Cold dry air is heavy and dense, hence it sinks. But warm moist air is light. Hence it rises. Dry air sinks and warm moist air rises. It rises. So on the east coast of South Africa, the warm Mozambique current which originates at the equator will bring warm moist air on the east coast. So we'll be having high temperatures on the east coast. Now 
on the west coast the cold benguela carrot cold benguela carrot originates at the poles at the poles it will bring what cold dry air on the west coast of south africa cold dry air so we'll have low temperatures on the west coast we'll have low temperatures remember these are factors affecting temperature ocean currents our warm ocean currents will bring warm moist air so we'll have high temperatures on that side on the east our cold ocean currents will, will bring cold dry air so we'll have low temperatures on the west coast now i just want to mention the rainfall as well i want to mention rainfall now our warm mozambique current i said it brings warm moist air and i said warm moist air rises if air rises Remember, we are in the troposphere, the layer which is closest to the Earth's surface. In the troposphere, temperature decreases with altitude. This warm, moist air will cool as it rises. Now, when it cools, it is going to condense and form clouds. And form clouds. And you know that clouds bring about the rainfall on the east coast. Warm, moist air rises as it rises it is going to cool and undergo condensation to form clouds and clouds will bring about more rainfall on the east coast now let's look at the west coast at the west coast we have cold dry air from the cold benguela current cold dry air sinks if it sinks then obviously we're going to have less cloud formation now with less cloud formation there will be less rain less rainfall on the west coast but on the east coast our warm mozambique current brings what warm moist air which rises cools and condenses to form clouds and therefore more rainfall on the east coast but now on the west coast it is cold dry air brought by the cold benguela current now cold dry air sinks or subsides which means that there will be less cloud formation. With less cloud formation, there will be less rainfall. Okay. One more time. Warm Mozambique current brings warm moist air on the east coast. Hence, we have high temperatures, right? On the east coast. But now, on the west coast, our cold Benguela current brings cold dry air to the west coast. Hence, we have low temperatures, right? And then I also mentioned that. On the east coast, warm moist air rises, cools and condenses to form clouds and therefore more rainfall on the east. But then on the west, cold dry air sinks. Hence, there will be less cloud formation and less rainfall. 